Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us on this episode of the Pave It Forward podcast. My name is Phil Metzger, and with me is Kevin Gray, and we are here to help leaders in the paving industry who are looking to run more efficiently, meet their ideal customer, and improve the lives of those around them through meaningful work. And we are live. Kevin, we're going to see if we can get some people in on the room that have any questions. If nothing else, this is just a great experiment for us. Uh, maybe it yeah. becomes something on, on Sunday afternoons where we can uh, do this, maybe answer some questions live and uh, get more involved with people. But with all that, how are you doing today, man? I dig it. Uh, I'm doing good, man. I was fortunate enough to get to spend um, a good portion of the weekend out on the water. So um much needed. My my 13 year old is down in uh, Panama City with a friend of his before the school year starts, and and my my other one is with uh, his mother this weekend. So I had had a little a little free time, and we got out on the water for a couple days uh, and, and evenings, and it was it was recharging, man. It was nice. It's good. Absolutely, I and got a little. You were just yeah. on the lake last week, so right. It was it was killer, man. It was one of the <clears> best one of the best. Uh, whole family vacations we've had it's kind of my dad's dream he's always gr he grew up on the water uh, so uh, we've been going down to lake cumberland in southern central kentucky for probably five to seven years now and we're really starting to get the hang of it my mom knows where we're staying she knows how the kitchen is going to be laid out my dad has the boat he, he rented uh, an extra pontoon boat two of the days so our entire family could set up shop and then he could run around tubing people man it was it was wow. awesome yeah but i know you uh you it over there in southern indiana uh is that where you were we uh we actually stayed in milton kentucky which is just south of like madison indiana so we we took the boat we put in it uh the westport ramp up over there in oldham county and just ran up the ohio river about you know about 40 miles so about an hour trip and uh and just beached the boat there and rented a little tiny house for the night. And nice. The night. Yeah, it was cool, man. Uh, the the mattress in the loft of the tiny house was only about two inches thick. So not sure I'd recommend it for, for if you're 40 years you know or older, but uh, yeah, we probably would have been okay just sleeping on the boat, honestly, in the cuddy cabin. But um, yeah, there it you worked go. out, man. It was cool. There you go. That's great, man. I love to hear it. Uh, it was really nice taking that time off. Um, I actually did a decent job of logging out a little bit, although um, it certainly was nice checking in every day. And it was actually a fairly successful week as far as gaining leads and everything. And so that was a that was a that was pretty gratifying to see. Um, but today, uh, wanted to get into a couple specific customer paths and just the yeah. actions that led to. Um, some of those interactions because some of the clients were just ideal clients on the residential side. It was just a, a good sized driveway in an area we're targeting and others are relationships that not only you're hoping to maintain for a long time, but that within just a few uh, connection points have really led to other large deals and just becoming or large connections and just becoming more of a name um, in an area in a targeted area. Um, so I just I really thought this was going to be a cool one. And and the first customer that that we kind of uh, that crossed my mind uh, was a horse farm owner. Um, and and I just wanted to, to dive into that because it all started with the Chamber of Commerce that you decided to join. And so yeah. I was wondering um, before we get into the actual interactions and, and how you met this horse farm owner, uh, tell us a little bit about the decision to join the Woodford County Chamber of Commerce and just your kind of general outlook on on the Chamber of Commerce mentality. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, when, when we sat down at the beginning of this season or, you know, there in late winter, you know, January, February, and and made the decisions like, all right, we're we're gonna go full tilt, you know, all in on this uh, on this paving operation again for the second time. Is like we we need we're basically starting from scratch. We're a brand new. Uh, although I've been in the industry and around this community for you know fifteen to twenty years, it, um, this company we've started is is a brand new entity. It's a brand new brand. Um, very few people have any awareness of the company or the brand. I mean, it's, you know, again, I have some relationships that I've established over my career, but that only goes so far when you don't have a company behind you to to sustain that or support that or to stand on. So, you know, we, we were pretty strategic um, on, on where, where we wanted to join, who we wanted to become affiliated with, you know, what paths we wanted to take. And we also, you know, a big thing for me is it was lining up, 
uh, with chambers and or communities that helped us serve our purpose with our heart in the pavement mm -hmm. aspect to pave it forward, which every county we serve, every every portion of the state community that, that we do work in, we we give a certain percentage of, of our proceeds back to those you know communities and organizations that we partner up with. And um, I, I'm being from Woodford County and just having having ties there, you know, my heart is, I've been in Louisville almost, you know, I've been in Louisville about 20 years now, but uh, still very passionate and, and have uh, great appreciation from where, from where I came from. And I couldn't think of a better place to, to kind of create an alliance with and get involved with their chamber. Uh, actually went to high school with the executive director of the Woodford County Chamber of Commerce. So it was pretty familiar getting back involved with them. And then any any piece of business we're able to pick up in that community, we're gonna we'll be partnering with with an organization or two within the community and, and being able to give back too. So, uh, and and not to mention, I mean, selfishly, you know, uh, those big horse farms have miles and miles and miles of pavement. So from a strategic standpoint, it makes sense to explore that. And and we even started started to explore that and move our operations a little more towards the east, towards thoroughbred and horse country uh, here in Kentucky, you know, about an hour east of Louisville where, where we normally operate. And it just, it just makes sense to get involved with, with some folks there in, in maintaining their roadways and their pavement assets, because there's, you know, there's a couple large companies in Lexington's that may service that uh, demand, but it's, it's, it's really, difficult sometimes for them to find partners uh, in their pavements. So we just, we thought it was a good fit on many levels, man. Yeah, absolutely. And <clears throat> from the marketing standpoint, it was, it was really um, shocking how much has just been happening in the Louisville market over the last five years, as far as paving companies. And so yeah. obviously one of the tougher things in every angle I typically come from is, is a marketing based angle. It's, it's really tough when at the beginning you're ranking somewhere between 30, 30th and 90th for asphalt paving related terms. It's Crazy. there's just no going getting around it that Google is built to make sure that the reason people are clicking on your site when they search for a term like asphalt paving is because it's a reputable site that other people have found value in. And so that's what you're going against whether you're just starting off or even if you've been doing it for years and maybe it's just doing it a little incorrectly but it comes down to developing those individual relationships and the path that we're getting ready yeah. to talk about was was simply choosing to make that investment into the the chamber of commerce which in doing some episode, some research um in our target areas the basic level intern or the entering level for businesses and chambers starts around 150 and goes up to maybe $500 uh, at the high end. And if you're a medium sized business, maybe it gets up to one to 2000. Um, but it gets you, you know, we found that the list is important. Um, a lot of times those businesses will list just a general contact email and phone number for them. Um, and if you're lucky, maybe a position of someone, but it's really about utilizing the events and then providing the assets to show those people that you're um, worthy of their business. Um, and so Absolutely. how this relationship started. Mm -hmm. So if, if you will, um, it started with your decision to choose a chamber uh, golf outing to attend. Uh, so kind of walk us through how okay. this relationship developed um, with this ideal of ideal uh, horse or customers for us. Well, it, it it's interesting because Emily, the director, actually kind of reached out to us and said, "Hey, I think this event would be a good one for you. I can I can team you up with two or three. You know, there's four people, and you would do a golf golf scramble. There's a foursome. So she's like, let me see if I can find two or three uh, either horse farm owners or facilities managers of these horse farms." And get you paired up with to to start making some face to face inter introductions and have some interaction with these folks, and it's it's funny how it happened. She had she had um, she had one line ended up getting one of them lined up, um, and he ended up not being able to attend. So I basically went and played golf with three folks that were irrelevant to anything we were trying to accomplish <laughs> by attending this event, but nonetheless uh, ended up making you know. They all know people in the you know the people I did play with knew people within the community. I met some other contractors while I was out there the day I you know made myself 
uh, visible. I, I was, you know, made myself available to people. It was, and that's, dude, it's, I'll tell you, you said something a minute ago that, that's very humbling, especially when you've gone from having a business that ranks historically for years in the top three of Google and basically getting leads fed to you on a silver platter, you know, 3,000 phone calls a year, no matter what to starting over and being ranked 30th to 50th to 70th, you know, whatever, whatever it's been as, as we get back on course here. Uh, so you've got to go, you got to go to the toolbox and you got to go a little bit old school and get uh, some of that grind going again. And whether that be, you know, knocking on doors even and passing out flyers or showing up at events, any, and that's been a lot of the things we've talked about, a lot of our strategy and discussions like, it, it doesn't matter what it is, if it's a ribbon cutting, if it's a networking event, if it's a golf scramble, if it's a town hall meeting, I mean, on it, you know, these chambers, these uh, trade associations and on and on and on. I mean, they have all of these events you can attend. It's like wherever I can be or wherever we can be, wherever one of our shirts can be or a hat or a business card or a flag or a banner or a table skirt, you know, whatever, We've got to get the community, our consumer base, re you know, established with our brand again. Like we've, we can all. Google is only going to allow us to move so fast. Like we, sure. there's just certain steps we're going to have to take to start moving the needle. Unless we could spend a, a boatload of money, which you know, you're starting a brand new business, you don't have the resources to dump five thousand dollars a month into online advertising. It's just not practical. So it's it's a lot of hustle. It's a lot of grind. It's a lot of how can we spread brand awareness, you know, and, and cast a big a net as possible and start start getting the communities reacclimated with the face, with the name, with the brand, and on and on and on. So uh, it's funny how that worked, man. The, the guy, the main guy that we really were interested in getting teamed up with had to cancel last minute. I, I'm trying to remember back, uh, I'll go through the emails, I think... So he's from Scotland and he manages this, this large thriving and growing horse farm uh, there in Versailles, Kentucky in Woodford County. And I believe he got called back to Scotland on some horse business. Um, he's originally from Scotland. He got like a day or two before the outing, he had to, he had to make an emergency horse, uh, some horse business uh, travel arrangements. So, you know, it was all good. We, we, you, while I was out golf, I mean, you, you can go a little bit here. Like I was out golfing and you were like, let's get proactive in getting an email created for this guy. Let's reach out to him. Let's say, Hey, sorry, we missed you today. So tell, you know, why don't you talk a little bit about once he didn't show up at golf, you know, what, what our strategy was after that. It's like, well, you, you know, on one hand you could just, you could just say, well, he didn't show up. Better luck next time. But that's not what we decided. I shot a 92 day over. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's not the course we took, though. Yeah, yeah, no, it was. Um, so I actually did find this email, and uh, it said, dear name, uh, I hope this email finds you well. My name is Kevin Gray. I'm the president and founder of Pave It Forward. I was looking forward to our golf game today, and I understand that your management visit required your attention. Um Given such important such visits, I completely understand the need to reschedule. I would love to formally introduce myself and discuss potential opportunities where our industries might intersect. Please let me know a convenient time for you in the coming days or weeks. I am flexible and would be happy to arrange a meeting that suits your schedule. Looking forward to connecting soon. Best regards, Kevin Gray. And after that followed, uh, I think it was nine emails, uh, but I'm sure it was 16 days worth of communication where yeah. you have a busy schedule, you're dealing with weather. Um, and he's, he was very kind and, and trying to accommodate. And it turned out 16 days later, he was able to, uh, invite you to his property and then yep. give you a tour. And, uh, I personally would love to hear this because, uh, first of all, the rolling Hills of Kentucky is one of the most beautiful places on earth. I, I definitely feel it's the most beautiful place in Kentucky. Red river gorge there in central Kentucky is also beautiful. And there's definitely some other mentionable names. Um, but, uh, when it comes to just, uh, iconic and feeling like you're nowhere else in America, maybe nowhere else besides um, Europe and the uh, Ireland region. Uh, it's just yeah. gorgeous. So um, tell us a little bit about that, the the asphalt that's on these properties and how that conversation went when when this when this gentleman gave you a tour of the horse farm. Yeah. So like you said, I mean, we, we stayed in communication over the next you know couple of weeks and um, just trying to make it work 
<clears throat> and um, yeah, I went and met with him uh, early last week. You know, he spent an hour and a half with me. And he said, hey, just hop in the car. And he gave me a tour uh, of this horse farm that that uh, the company he's with and uh, is the is the facilities manager uh, of these properties. You know, they, they acquired an existing farm there in Versailles uh, four or five years ago. <clears throat> It's a, about an 1,100 acre property. They got 550 acres on one side of US 60 there, and then about 550 acres on the other side. They've just acquired another farm behind them, uh, which adds, I think, another 300 acres, he said. And um, I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. I mean, you're driving through these, you know, narrow country horse farm lane roads, which need greenest maintain. grass you will ever see. Greenest right. grass you'll ever see most beautiful hillside you'll ever see thoroughbreds you know out in the pastures um he took me in into gosh i don't know six or eight barns probably several of which they have just uh either built or renovated or in the process we actually talked to his mason contractors there on site for a while like we went in and just but he was he was really and it was awesome because although I've been around the thoroughbred industry, I mean, you grow up in Kentucky, especially central Kentucky and here in Louisville, that is the home of the Kentucky Derby. Like you're familiar with the thoroughbred industry and horse racing, but to actually be on their property and just see what he does on a day to day and the property he manages and the horses they manage and what goes into to keeping a farm like that operational, um, to to see you know to go on property with him of the farm he just acquired and said uh, and I got to see one of so one of the, the old barns that was on the the farm they just acquired they're they're not demolishing it so they're renovating they're expanding on it basically they're turning tobacco barns into now horse barns and he was showing me exactly how they're designing them why they're designing them that way where and how they like to keep the horses you know why. And it was just, I mean, just the how, the just the insight I got into the industry in an hour, hour and a half I got to spend with him uh, was really cool. And I think, you know, that's that's where that's where business starts in my estimation, just those personal relationships. I mean, I got an opportunity to understand his business better. He got an opportunity to understand my business better. And then at the end of that, we get to talk about how maybe we could be a benefit to each other, you know, on, on a on a relational uh, kind of basis rather than just a transactional kind of basis. I and mean, it was it was really cool just to, just to have that opportunity to spend time with him. And uh, I can't thank him enough because I mean, for someone to spend an hour and a half of their time, and you could tell he was busy because he was you know a few minutes late, you know, because he was finishing up some business to start our appointment. And by the time we we're finished, he's like, hey, I gotta I gotta move on down down the line here. I got you know things to do the rest of the day but but in that hour hour and a half his attention like none of us neither one of us had our cell phones out like it was all attention on each other uh very cool experience and um and it and that and that's how it starts i think i think about 15 years ago when i started a business and started building relationships and when we weren't top three on google and we weren't just the phone wasn't just ringing off the hook it was like how do you start implanting brand uh, personal, you know, professional brand in the company, personal brand in myself and or the other leadership within the, within the company. Like, how do we tell the community who we are, how we do things, what our values are, what our, what our mentality is. And it's, it's just going back to the roots of like old fashioned, you know, relational business. Um, and it's really cool. I'm re I really enjoy it. So let's, well, it, and it's one of those, th it's one of those things that, that I think you almost, may be guilty of forgetting about once you get to a certain point in business, unless you're not intentional to remember how important that human element is and that relationship element of doing business is and trust and belief and values. I mean, it's, there's just a piece there that's um, even when things go wrong, if you've got a relationship established, you can make them right much easier than when things are just transactional. Man, it sounds like a, a killer time. I'm super jealous. Um, but there's oh, there's quite a, there, there's quite a few takeaways there. Um, one was just um, when you talk about the end. I'm curious about the wrapping up of that conversation. You and I are naturally curious guys. 
If there is a process and a system to something, chances are it's going to hold our attention. It sounds like you were talking to a guy that may have been similar. It was really easy to have conversations, but once it boils down to the end of the date, you know, like you understand that obviously this client, potential client is worth a lot for several reasons. One, it'll be a high dollar job if he ever needs, needs one. Two, he runs mm. in circles that that with people that he when he recommends you, it's probably not going to be a small pat residential patch job. And so right. there there are aspects and, and three, he he probably doesn't need any work. I mean, in most situations, they may not need work anytime soon. So as you're wrapping up this conversation and things are coming to the end, like what are you thinking? Um, what what question does what questions does he have and what's your process there? Well, it's, you know, at the, at the end of that, and it was, it's funny because one of the first barns he took me to, they had just finished the construction on it and coincidentally had just paved. They probably, there was probably a $50,000 paving project that had just taken place probably within the last 30 days. I mean, I could still smell the oil in the pavement. I mean, it was new, new, um, and him still taking the time to meet with another paving contractor, even though they've already have one they at least have trusted enough to use um was pretty cool i did find out during an hour and a half that they're not married to any of their paving contractor subs that they've used in the past um they didn't have an immediate need they do have some needs upcoming they like i said they are renovating and or building six or eight new barns which are all going to have roads around them and access for for trailers and wagons you know cleaning up the muck or bringing feed to the horse, you know, there's, there's roadway that needs to be built. Um, nothing, nothing necessarily pertinent, maybe, maybe something by the end of the season, but we didn't even get to that. So when, when I hear those things, um, my, my, my go-to or my offense in that moment, my proactive approach is like, what value can I bring to this person that doesn't need our services in this moment? How can I keep them intrigued? How can I bring them some? Because look, man, <clears throat> when you're top three on Google, um, I think it's easy sometimes to forget about the value that you're supposed to deliver to your customers because you it just you're just fed business almost. Now you've done a you've done a lot on the front end the years prior to that to probably earn that right. I'm not saying uh, that you haven't done things right for a long period of time to earn that right to be fed business. But I think we lose sight sometimes of like, that's the most important thing we've got to do is continue to offer value and customer experience and customer service at a high level until the day you say you're done doing this and not rest on your laurels and not get comfortable with, we've made it, we're the best. If you don't hire us, hit the bricks, you know, we don't need your business anyway. And was, so at the end of that meeting, it was like, what value can I bring to you, to this farm to your board of directors, you know, whoever's making the final decisions out here. Um, and that's, and that's how I left it. And I, I said, Hey, I said, you know, you're busy. I'm bit, this is our busy time. I said, maybe I said, how about um, late this fall or even this winter? And I just did this in conversation and closing. I made, I made a value offer. I was like, and he's, I, 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 I would hate to even estimate, but I bet, I bet there's at least 20 miles of roadway within his farm. And that's just a guess. I mean, it's, it could be even more than that. And I said, I'll come out and spend a day or two, whatever it takes for me to take pictures, make an assessment and, and figure out the pavement, you know, your pavement assets that you have on this farm, because there are newer sections, there are older sections. Uh, there's brand new sections. There's areas that do need, probably could use some immediate repair. There's some that are in, in perfectly fine conditions. Like, let me help you because most consumers, unless they have a pavement partner that they are aligned with and they're getting extreme value from, they're very reactive on their pavement needs. They see a pothole and like, oh, we need to fix that. Or this is starting to crack. We need to crack seal this. Oh, that's starting to turn gray. We probably need to seal coat it. Meanwhile, he's got 20 plus miles of roadway he he's not wrapping his arms around that because he's he's in the horse industry he's not in the paving industry so i said why don't i come out i'll do an assessment of every inch of roadway you've got we'll get it all figured out where it's at in its uh, respective life cycle 
and we'll start figuring out a maintenance plan to maybe uh, after a period of two, three, maybe even four years of working on your pavement, creating a plan, you'll get everything on kind of a, a, a cycle to where we, and maybe we break the farm into four different quadrants and say, quadrant one, we're going to do in 2025. And this is when, you know, quadrant two and get it on kind of just a rotating schedule. A, so he understands what he's got. B, he can start understanding what kind of budget on an annual basis he needs or can't even allocate for his pavement maintenance. And then, it, you know, it just, it just helps them. It takes that, that load off of him. So he can build barns and he can, figure out how to run their farm more you know, better, uh, more efficiently, um, what, what they need to be doing on their end and not worrying about the roadways. So uh, I said, let's, uh, and, and we sent him some, some resources too, right? I mean, we yep. you know, tell him about, it. so, so I offer, it's yep. like, I'll come out, I'll come out and assess all of your pavement. We'll get it all analyzed. We'll get it all on the PASER scale. We sent him that so he can start correlating what I'm talking about with what he's looking at. And then we'll we'll get a plan together going forward, so you know exactly each and every year what needs to be done, and not needs to be done, but it needs to be done most importantly in an effort to save you big time dollars over the next twenty five years. I mean, this guy is my age. It seems like he's going to be in this position at this farm. It seems like he's very happy. You know, he could this could be a twenty year relationship. So like, let's sure. take that twenty year burden of worrying about your pavement assets. Oh, and by the way, we can probably save you 40, 50, 60 percent uh, if we're proactive with this maintenance plan instead of you sitting over here trying to be reactive anytime something may go wrong. Yeah, it was it was a great. Um, Sorry for the long winded answer. there. No, no, absolutely. Because it's in the intricacies as to why you do things in business. You know, so many times when you run a business, you feel like you're just hammering a stone you don't know why you're doing it you're chipping away at something but you don't even know if you want what's in the middle so you just you don't yeah, know if, if you're doing it right so by diving into these tactics and why i thought this would probably make a great live episode is because we're only on example one and we see the the zigzag pattern that happens in these relationships and we're really only talking about a few things here it's joining the chamber getting on the scramble not getting the him on the golf game following yeah. up getting the tour okay so it's it's pretty it, it's lengthy but this is one person and when the follow up part of that email was that you'd said you'd send over some information and so that gave us an opportunity to create a slide deck for commercial properties and facilities managers yeah. that really explains our process answers a lot of their questions and most of all explains why the heck you even need to be proactive about about asphalt maintenance and it does we got to really compile and we'll be we were going to uh, share this deck um with with everyone the following week of this podcast so over the next seven days here make sure to uh, ask about that yeah, can we share that out absolutely we're gonna we're gonna share that out so um subscribe for notifications on either instagram or youtube um but we were able to make a nine page slide deck and uh, on one of the final pages, Kevin recorded a video message saying it was a pleasure seeing your property, gave some pros and everything. And uh, this isn't this is a now slide deck that we can use for multiple other purposes. We're going to use this for uh, commercial clients in similar situations as well and follow up emails uh, to commercial clients that have a proposal but haven't signed on the, the, the dotted line yet. So um, by just going through and I feel like, taking the time to do things and do the research and even get that personal touch that you're talking about back in business, you're not only developing one relationship, you're, you're building off that, you know, we we're not probably not going to get to it today, but we know the power of word of mouth. And so even that aspect of, of him now having that word of mouth power uh, along with educational resources that he can use that we can use in the future, oh, uh, it just lends itself to good practices and also good things that you can pass on to a sales team um, when that time comes. Absolutely. I mean, and, um, that's why I've just always been of the mentality that it's, it's always worth it um, to deliver a customer experience. Uh, and be of value, whether you're going to get the job or not, because I don't, I don't know if we're going to do business with this guy, but I know what kind of experience we've given him already. I know what kind of information we've shared with him for no return on our, like we haven't gained a dollar, but we've probably given him, we've given him 
15 years of experience and data uh, and understanding in that slide deck we shared with him that he has as a resource now, whether he chooses to do business with us, with us or not. But I guarantee you at some point in any circle he may run in that if someone brings up the word asphalt or pavement or roads, he's going to think because our slide deck, everything we've sent him matches our brand. He's going to think blue. He's going to think this logo and hit, our name is going to come out of his mouth when he's talking to someone. Or if and not, pretty, he's, going to, he's going to know what to search for in his email. To, to, right, to exactly. Look it up and, so, yeah. I mean, you just, you just never know, man. And you just, you just have to do it. And um, it, it's hard. It's a lot. Look, and I, I'm, you know, we're starting a business essentially from scratch. So, um, I'm not, this isn't me, like, uh, this isn't an ego thing, but I just I'm trying to help people understand what it takes to get these things off the ground. You know, I'm, I'm selling, I'm doing the books, I'm doing the customer service, I'm installing the work, I'm going to the meetings, like, it's a few years of that before it starts clicking, and it just is what it is, and I think a big piece of that is me teaming up with you, like, you you have been a huge asset like i i can't do you start adding the brand and the marketing and the strategy and the slide decks and the data and all that on top of all the other things that i'm already trying to do to get a business i think that becomes too much so the investment to spend with with a good marketing hand um director is is amazing so, i mean that's yeah. that's a big it's it's definitely helping get off the ground much quicker than it would be otherwise um, yeah, but but I feel that said, there's just such a big piece of that there. I couldn't do all of this without your arm. Yeah, you well, know? well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. And uh, just just a minute to to clarify. I think uh, a lot of marketing companies. Um, I'm we definitely don't run a traditional marketing company here because we're willing to get into your process and into your data and actually learn your product and your sales systems so that we can create assets for your sales process. Um, yeah, it kind of comes along with the side of data and all that. But if you go looking for traditional marketing companies, chances are you may not find that. And that is just kind of value for the customer. But I also wanted to touch on before we kind of move on to the next case is we are talking about an ideal residential client. Um, you know, if you are into it a little bit and you're not just scraping for any customer and if you need need customers and it's a residential customer you're talking to and you don't have any jobs on the books and you need to spend an hour and a half with that that client go ahead you know that's then if that's what it's worth it's what it's worth but when you talk about choosing who you take the time with to have these to have this communication with and 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 take time out of your day and you know, he, if he just did an asphalt paving job and gave you an hour and a half, he's not making 20 bucks an hour. He is he is taking valuable time out of his day to yeah. make this to make this relationship. And from what you picked up, he, he doesn't have any any immediate needs. So that is a principle and characteristics you can look with uh, with people you are talking with, especially in your ideal realm, maybe commercial that um, you can spend a little bit more of that time with. You can, and, that, and that's a really good point, because. Um... You know, as I mentioned, that that delivering customer value and experience is is very important. You you also need to have some mindfulness and some clarity, and sometimes, you know, a lot of the time, that comes with just the experience and wisdom of being in your industry for a while. But yeah, make sure that that customer is worthy or worth the time you, you know you're putting into them too. If it's if it's not a great lead, I'm not suggesting you spend an hour and a half with them talking about their driveway. Like if it's not, a <laughs> you do, and, and that's just something you've got to figure out on your own, whether they're a good fit for your business or not, not uh, the, the, probably the most important lesson I ever learned in this industry was learning when to, when to, when and how to say no to a job that didn't line up with our business model. Um, learning learning to pass on work that just wasn't a good fit not that they're not a good fit for someone but that doesn't mean that everybody gets an hour and a half of your time you do have a business to run you do have a business to launch you do have other consumers that need your time so just just be mindful of where you're wanting and willing to spend your time i think that's a good point um and speaking of that uh we both had the the second example that i wanted to give of kind of how these relationships can work and what showing up means um, literally is 
a time that we took out of a week. I was actually on vacation and it was about an hour and 15 minute drive. Luckily, it was gorgeous through the heart of Kentucky from where we yeah. were vacationing to yeah. a coffee meeting for, for the Woodford County Chamber again. Uh, so this was just a, a free coffee kind of a uh, forum type uh, breakfast and learn type scenario. Um, but there it was, uh, again, within the horse industry, there was a mix of um, locals, uh, just uh, interested uh, individuals as well as business. Um, but you were able to not only learn about a new or learn about a $27.7 billion industry in Kentucky, but you were also able to uh, follow up with people that uh, were just happened to be in the room. So can you kind of take us through what just going to that morning coffee was like for you and, and what you may have learned and what the takeaways were? Well, it, I mean, it was, you know, they were talking about um, a new saddle, uh, was standard bread farm uh, that was coming to Midway, Kentucky, which is where, which is my hometown, Midway, uh, in there in Woodford County. Um, so the, the gentleman there, he was uh, he was actually a professor at Midway College in their equine program, the thoroughbred program, and he's a, a big part of this new uh, farm that's coming to Midway. And just just to get uh, you know, you listen to someone that's that's in that industry or bringing industry to a small community. Uh, you get a lot of movers and shakers in the room and you get, uh, you get a lot of inf interesting information that you wouldn't otherwise get if you didn't attend that meeting. So I'm not saying that every coffee networking event is a great <laughs> one to attend because there's, you know, 20 of them a week probably that you could choose from, but sure. find ones that make sense to, to your business again, uh, that makes sense for potential or ideal customers of yours to potentially be attending, which, which there were. There were other business owners at that meeting. There were other general contractors at that meeting. There were banks at that meeting. There were other people within, you know, there were what, five or six other horse uh, uh, farm owners and or people within the industry at that meeting. Uh, there were two people that there's a woman there at the library from the library where they hosted the meeting and from the health department who we coincidentally have parking lot bids into that we got to touch again and they got to see us with our blue shirts on and just the brand awareness and um, just getting out there and getting active and again I, I've, I know I've said the, the word proactive probably five or six times now but uh, when you're trying to build something and you're trying to get because I think at the end of the day word of mouth still wins no matter what and it's hard to get word of mouth spreading if you're not present if you're not visible whether that be online or in person like you just you've got to be out there for people to be talking about it. whether it's a, and i know we're getting ready to get into another example i don't know if we're gonna have time to get into two more examples because yeah. this has been a good one right here but absolutely you know the, the couple we're getting the one the next one i know we're going to talk to happened because uh someone saw saw our crew and our equipment and our work and a yard sign and they had a phone number to call so it's you know it's uh, just getting yourself out there is huge. And and look, when the guy says it's a $27.7 billion industry, my mind goes to, well, surely, surely they're spending at least, you know, a tenth of a percent on their pavement assets. Sure. And that's a huge, like, that's a huge number. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a huge number. Yeah. Yep. It's some you of know, the largest. A, a tenth uh, horse of a percent of that is. Three million bucks. Yeah, ten percent of that. You know, one percent of that is twenty-seven million bucks. I don't know what their paving and pavement maintenance budget is in that industry, but it's probably somewhere between a tenth and a percent of of their of the total industry. And I'm so. guessing a lot of the these places don't want their guests, and especially their horses that are worth hundreds of thousands of dollars, running on uh, asphalt with potholes in them. Absolutely. And I mean, they do a lot of their training and their walking on these paved roads around these farms. And I mean, they're bringing in, they're bringing in very important clientele. I mean, the queen of England, you know, used to come to these horse farms all the time. Like they don't want her showing up on shitty roads and her horse and you know, her <laughs> carriage or nowadays her, her Maybach or whatever she's driving in on, you know, from the airport from yeah. a private jet. So, you yeah. know, Absolutely. Got to, got to keep it nice for the queen. Uh, you gotta but yeah, keep, I mean, it's got to keep them roads crispy for the queen. Uh, I mean, yeah, you can't, <laughs> can't be bumpy while you're waving there. You got to be, that's able to, right. Got to be able to do your right. thing. But 
you know, it really is people from around the world hold uh, their most prized possessions. Some of them with these horses, uh, they yeah. host them here. Um, so industry. it's just, and when you talk about 20 miles on a single property and, uh, you know, at least 20 different um, a farm slash training facilities, uh, it's a great, it's a great opportunity. And I wanted to also um, note here that um, there was a, there was someone from a, a publication that was specifically within the horse racing industry that specifically trainers and maintenance and facilities people might be looking at, which never popped up on my radar and research from just looking through these things. Um, it's such a niche thing. And a lot of it is still even on paper in some of these instances. So that was a, that was a great opportunity. And I don't remember if it was this meeting or, or at a different Woodford County event that you were mentioning, but someone put you in touch with the mayor. And so now that is, yeah, a, it, was an, from, it was from that, again, it's from that meeting, the, the, um, the woman at the health department, the executive director of the health department who we were, uh, we're getting ready to get their parking lot project, by the way, said, hey, do you know Brian Trogett? Uh, hope, we're, hope, hope we're okay to drop some names here. But anyway, it's public information. He's the sure, mayor sure. Of, of Woodford County over sales. Um, said, hey, do you know Brian? And I'm like, yeah, I went to high school with Brian. And, and so just, I mean, just in uh, the day or the day after that, she sent out uh, an introduction email uh, or, or shared his email with with us, and you developed uh, an introductory email that we sent out to him. And I mean, you can tell him. I mean, it, I mean, yeah. think about what all transpired by just going to that. You know, having having the golf scramble, and then following up with Michael, and then um, you know, going to that coffee thing, and all the things that led out that led from that. That email we sent to the mayor. I mean, tell tell him about that, man. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we just we take all the information and and uh, we definitely been use the benefits of AI for writing and composing emails. These days, it's it's really good at having a professional tone. And plus, you can upload even your previous some examples of how you write to help you shape these things. Because I am a visual learner. I like my data. Writing is not my strength, but um, we use a lot of Kevin's previous communication. Uh, I told it some notes about. Um, their previous relationship, how they met and everything like that. Uh, we composed an email using uh, Claude is the name of the program. I ran it by Kevin. Uh, we we shot it the mayor's way. And then, as you said, a day or two later, he got back to you. And it was, it's really getting fun. You know what I mean? Like it's it's yeah. getting to the, to the point now where you can say, oh, remember that thing that we used for that person? Why don't we try using it here? It's like, yes, immediately. And we're go we're doing things now like, um, week one, two, and three follow-ups that are all different, um, that stress different urgency that, you know, say, did we lose you type things? And it's just really evolving into something that your systems are now meshing with all the assets that we can create, um, to again, provide value through both of those things. So it's all meeting in, uh, the CRM now and turning into data and it's just becoming a beautiful thing. Um, yeah, man, and, 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 and yeah, go ahead. No, I'm saying, and now we have a meeting with the mayor and the director of the roads department there in, in Woodford County, um, because of, you know because we showed up to a meeting and you know had a yeah. conversation with somebody and a recommendation and an email and who knows like and that's just how it, that's how that web is spun, yeah. And those relationships are created and and brand awareness is built. I mean, it's absolutely. And the other one. Just, can't just do it online. Like you've got to be in the trenches, shaking hands. It's old fashioned business still works and values and all that. I mean, it's still at the end of the day, that's a huge piece of this. Absolutely. Because especially with these larger clients, with the larger jobs, if they can instill trust and have trust in someone, what a relief. I mean, you know, like even, you know, as you're sitting here talking about not having to worry about if the asset or the follow-up is going to get made, you know, any of those hats that you can take off from their perspective, you know, any of those recommendations, if he can look to you for maybe not asphalt things or for concrete late related things or whatever, and just taking that little extra step and maybe even a second opinion, because if you had not followed up with um, the horse farm owner from golf, it would have not been a thing at all. And so we're really talking about going golf with people that were of no real benefit professionally um, and deciding to, to do an email. And the second one was going to a coffee um, meeting in an area that you were interested in. Um, and that's incredible. I, I just freaking love it, man. It's, it's what makes my hair stand up. 
And um, yeah, man, it, it's definitely getting very exciting. Yeah, it's, dude, it's it's just a testament to, to anybody out there that's that's either starting or trying to grow. It's like it's uh, it's hard. I mean, it's hard. It's stressful. Um, there's typically a lot more losses than there are wins. But like when you get the wins, you're like, yeah, this is it's all it's going to be all good and it's going to be worth it. Sure. And it's just like these aren't earth shattering, mind blowing experiences. They're just, they just took a little diligence. They took a little persistence. They took some follow-up. They took some creativity. They took bringing some value to a, maybe, a, you know, maybe, maybe a potential customer. Mm -hmm. And it, it just got some, you know, shaking some trees, man, got some balls rolling. That's I like it, it. shaking some trees, it, yeah. shaking some trees, creating some momentum, because if, if you're not out there creating some kind of momentum and you're just waiting for things to happen, um, it's going to be a, it's going to be a long, long ass road. Absolutely. Well, uh, we hope that we, we definitely gave some people out there, uh, something that they can walk away with because it is, it can be a lonely journey and we are here for that. Um, it's been, uh, you know, I, I have some other notes that we're going to get here to in another episode, um, about another specific relationship, and then also some notes about social media. Because as you said, unless you're willing or have the ability to throw a ton of advertising money, you're going to have to get out there and and do something. Now, yeah. you know, of course, as a marketing company, we would love to be able to, you know, assure you everything. But that's just that's just not how it works. Google like life, it takes a little bit of trust and and some proven experience to to be able to show up. So when you do talk about, you know, your social media plan and, and things like that. Uh, we'll follow that up with another episode because there are definitely some uses uh, on making key industry connections, um, making local connections, and then connections within your own industry. Um, and then there's also some social advertising options. But when you when you talk about just getting back to the root and what you can do today for your business, um, I, I mean, it's really fun to work with you because um, you're you're willing to not only take suggestions and real quick a, a peek behind the scenes on how this all works when we join chambers and we have uh, organizations that we're a part of like building industry associations and chambers um, when they send out their schedules we will put it on Kevin's calendar as tentative um, in front of it so that way he knows there's nothing hard on the schedule but it's just an opportunity so for you to take that step into um, getting out there and just being able to utilize our strengths and being able to supply you with sales assets. I mean, man, it's, it's why it's, it's one of the, the feelings on why you, why you do what you do as a business owner to look for collaborations and pushing things farther than it could have gone for the simplest of reasons, if not other than one, taking the opportunity to, to take action like the golf scramble and two, using your connections and your partnerships to, to have team wins. It's just, just killer, man. Yeah, I mean, I'm just, I, I'm just looking at my schedule here the next, the next couple of weeks. I mean, I, because of what, you know, the system we've created, I, I see within the next two weeks, there's eight or 10 opportunities. If they fit into my schedule, I can go show up with a polo shirt on and shake in a pocket full of business cards and maybe shake a couple of people's hand and, and spread the brand awareness, man. Like, and that's, sure. um, and I promise we'll wrap the episode here up soon, but I, I, something else I've been getting into is in a lot of those ribbon cup cutting um, ceremonies for the di different chambers we're on, we can look and see uh, what the location is and if they own the property themselves. And then if they yeah. do own the property themselves, which tends to not always be the case a lot of the times, we can check Google Earth and see if their parking lot <laughs> they needs something. Absolutely. And then, oh, by the way, we put a look at this one note uh, in your schedule to you know see that um, this one, you may want to pay a little bit more attention to this. And that's what happened with the, uh, the actual Woodford County event. Uh, we had a look at this note because it was having to do with the horse industry. And here we are, man. It's getting fun, Kev. It's getting fun. It is getting fun. Man. Like it's, uh, it, and it's interesting. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm sure when people tune in or, or check our channel, sometimes, you know, they're, they're hoping to see us talking about paving or pavement or talking about equipment or dump trucks or, you know, the field process but man there <laughs> what i've learned in my career is that is you know it's obviously a very big part of what we do it, it is what we do but it's 
it's I, I think it's only 50 percent of what it takes to to build and maintain a successful if, if growing company today i mean it's just it's just half of it like the other half is figuring out how to become uh, a badass marketing media sales customer experience company that also does asphalt paving and pavement maintenance like it's it's really what it has become you know, in in the, the way the world is today i mean it just sure it is so absolutely and it's as as you said it's it'll it's it's an easier process if you're already at the top um but fighting your way up there i tell you figure out what it is how you can connect with those customers uh, if you can get it on video get your face on video um mm -hmm. because not only are you going to send them something maybe with your logo, but to see your sales representative's face or your face on it again, um, just keep the research going. You know, we're here for you. If we don't know it, uh, ask us a question. We'll we'll research it and, and figure it out ourselves and and try to keep keep uh, bringing some value here. But um, but Kevin, on this wonderful Sunday, uh, is there anything else on your mind through about this uh, specific topic or process that you want to let the people know about before we uh, sign off here? Yeah, I know I. I think we, I think we got into it quite well. I think we talked about a lot. It's just, um, I don't know, man, just, just figure out a way. And it's, it look, I, I'm guilty because uh, early this season and, and I'm sure even getting into winter, like when you first start a business or when you're new or you're just figuring things out, like it's, it's survival mode a lot of the time. And it's, uh, it's very easy to get trapped in the mentality that I have to sell work or I, uh, I can't pay my bills if we don't land some jobs and everything becomes monetary and everything becomes transactional. And it's like, if you can get beyond that a little bit and get on the other side of the transaction and, and understand how you can bring value to your consumer first instead of worrying about your own need for financial or transactional peace of mind or security. I think it's, I think long-term it, it's going to, it's going to help you maintain and, and build and grow a better business than, than everything being transactional and everything being about the finance. And look, I've, I've done it the other way. There, there have been plenty of times in my career, um, especially during certain points in my career or it was more so about the finances and what was in it for me, or how can I get ahead, or how can my family do better, or how can our company get stronger and 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 not um, not tapping into what I should be more concerned about, and that's what value can I bring to the consumer, to the community, and to the industry in which I serve. So like it's 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 hard to maintain that balance, especially when you're stressed out financially. But but I. With ex with my experience, in my experience, um, I can say that it, if you're doing things for the right reasons, uh, things typically work out in your favor. Not that awesome. it's going to be easy. I'm not saying it's going to be easy and everything's going to be sunshine and rainbows and it's all going to work out. But you just got to trust the process. You got to have some faith. You got to have some patience. You got to have some tolerance. And uh, things will be all right. That's right. Well, uh, thanks for the last word, Kev. Uh, really hit home because even with even with the marketing you know we we will learn that uh you know when you put a headline up there it's not superior asphalt pavement it's beautify your property it's uh uh extend the life of your extend the life of your pavement it's you know ex improve yeah. your investment in your property so yeah. it's it's all oh, about return. it's all about uh you know what you can do for that customer but if you out there have any other questions uh please let us know at pave it forward and at pave it forward llc on youtube and instagram uh stay tuned check out any other episodes we have going on the youtube channel like and subscribe and we will see you soon thanks for your time kev and see you everyone out there Thank you, man. Thanks, guys.